If you're planning on buying a new trailer, upgrade the trailer or upgrade your tow vehicle, you have to stick around. This is perhaps the most important video to watch. In this video, I will explain in detail what all the numbers are on the trailer, on the tow vehicle, and why it is important to understand what your capacity is. The trailer that we will be using today is our trailer. It's the Jayco 174BH single axle camper. Let's start with the trailer and understand the numbers. The numbers are located on the driver's side of the trailer. When you go to your driver's side of your trailer, there are multiple stickers here. Let's start with the empty weight or the curb weight. So on this yellow sticker here, you can see that the empty or curb weight of this trailer is 2,955 pounds. Please note this is the empty weight. It only contains your propane cylinder, but other than that, it's empty. Please be advised that this is the number most dealers will tell you, will quote you when you go and purchase their vehicle. Reason being is they just really want to push trailers. However, when you go to the campsite, you're never, ever, ever close to this number. The number you need to look for is the following number here. In this case, you can see it's 3,750 pounds. This is your GVWR, which stands for your gross vehicle weight rating. This means your trailer packed with your sleeping bags, with your pillows, with your food, everything inside of your trailer. This is always the way you need to look at. Unless you go and weigh your trailer on the cat scale, you should always assume that when you're towing, when you're going on the trip, this is the way you're towing with your tow vehicle. The other important number is here, which is your payload capacity. In this case, on this trailer, this is 795 pounds which is really just the difference between your gross vehicle weight rating and your empty weight now that we know what the trailer weight is both the curb weight the empty weight as well as the gross vehicle rating there's one more other critical number we need to understand when it comes to the trailer next element that is not advertised on the sticker often you can find it on your manufacturer's website however in general a good rule of thumb is to take 10 to 15 percent of your gvwr on your trailer in this case again that is 3,750 pounds and take 10% of that, which means in this case roughly 375 pounds to determine your tongue weight. Your tongue weight will weigh your tow vehicle down the moment you put it on. That number will be deducted from your vehicle's payload and let's talk about the tow vehicle next. Let's use this tow vehicle as an example. This is a, the actual tow vehicle we're using for this trailer. This is a 2020 Ford F-150, half ton truck, crew cab, five liter. Now Ford advertises for the 2020 model year that the truck can tow up to 13,000 pound of towing capacity. The reality is as we go through the numbers and as we do some number crunching in a minute, you will see how that is nowhere even close to this truck. But now let's look at some numbers on the tow vehicle. Within the driver's door, there are some very important key metrics we need to look for. So on the door jam, what we're looking for are the following numbers. The first one is the gross vehicle weight rating. So again, the truck fully loaded. In this case, it's 7,000 pounds. Other important information is your wheelbase, which we will need later. If you're not quite sure what your axial ratio is, you can find that here as well. There are some gross axle weight ratings as well for both the front and the rear however this is very difficult to calculate without actually going on the scale so for now we're going to exclude this out of the comparison the next item we need to look for is perhaps the most important number which is your vehicle payload in this case you can see that this towing vehicle has a payload capacity of 1821 pounds this again means you can put 1821 pounds of cargo of people in the truck so the next important item to check on your tow vehicles, make sure you have a brake controller installed. If you're towing something over 3000 pounds, you should have a brake controller. The trailer has electronic brakes. If you don't have a brake controller, essentially your trailer has no brakes. Of course, the heavier your, tra your trailer is, the more problematic this becomes. Or if you don't have a brake controller installed, you can buy them aftermarket on Amazon or any of the other popular websites. However, you need to make sure you have the proper seven pin wiring harness installed. Otherwise your brake controller will not work and will not do anything. So now that we determine what the weight ratings are on the trailer, we know what some of the weights are on the truck. We have confirmed that we have a brake brake controller installed. The last thing, and this is perhaps an obvious one, we need to make sure we have the proper hitch installed. So let's have a look on this tow vehicle. You have to make sure you have the proper hitch and you have your seven pin connector. If you don't, you, you cannot connect your trailer that uses a seven pin as well to hook it up to your tow vehicle and have all the lights and charging work properly. So now we determined the 
capacity on the trailer, we know some numbers on the truck, now we know whether we can tow it safely and legally, right? Well, not necessarily. Keep in mind, every vehicle is built different. There is no one size fits all. So as a result, we have to take the numbers that we took earlier, go inside, go on the computer, on the internet, look up the towing guide, and let's do a bit of calculation. So let's go inside. So now that we know the numbers, let's jump on the internet and do a little bit of number crunching. So due to the magic of editing, we are now in the computer. So the first thing, type in your truck model, your year, and then towing guide. Typically the original manufacturer has the towing guide laid out for you. Now the first thing you notice here is that Ford advertises for the 2020 F-150 to have a towing capacity up to 13,000 pounds. However, as we will find out in a minute here, that is nowhere close to the actual towing capacity that the truck that I have is, is capable of. So the other thing is we are looking at conventional towing. Um, if you are trying to tow a fifth wheel, um, go to the fifth wheel towing. Otherwise, this is where you want to find the information. So now based on the on the sticker on the door, we know several values. We already know it was the five, it is a five liter V8 truck that we have. I know my gear ratio is 331. If you're not quite sure, again, the value is on the sticker. You can look up that value on the internet to get your exact ax axle rating. We also know that it's the Super Crew combination. Uh, it's a 4x4 truck and we also know that the wheelbase is 145 inches. As again, we check that on the door sticker. So now when we go to the table, look at the axle rating, look at the 4x4 with the 145 wheelbase, we see that the towing capacity for my truck, for my configuration, is only 9,000 pounds. So if I was ever planning on towing a very heavy, heavy trailer, I'm already limited at this point in time to 9,000 pounds. So this is the number we need to keep in mind. The other item we need to keep in mind is what is called our GCWR, which is our gross combined weight rating. So that really means your, your tow vehicle, in this case the truck, the trailer, and the payload of both need to be under 14,400 pounds. So now that we know some of the actual numbers from Ford, let's put in some values in this spreadsheet. I left a copy of this spreadsheet in the description below. So if you'd like to have a copy of this so you can put in your own numbers, check the description. So let's start with the trailer. So in this case, it's a 2019 174BH by Jayco. We know that the curb weight based on what we looked up is 2,955 pounds. So again, this is the empty weight. We know that the fully loaded trailer weight is 3,750 pounds. The hitch weight is approximately 10% of the uh, GVWR, so let's put in 375. So now we have our vehicle set. Now our tow vehicle, in this case it's a 2020 F-150, 5 liter 4x4. Four the curb weight of this vehicle, uh, I actually calculated, so I took the GVWR, so 7,000 pounds, deducted the payload, which is 1,821 pounds, which gave me a curb weight of 5,179 pounds. The GCWR, we just got from the towing guide. We know that that is 14,400 pounds. We know that the towing capacity is 9,000 pounds. And we know that the payload is 1821. So now we have the numbers that we need for the towing vehicle. Now let's jump on to cargo. So if we look at the cargo, this includes everything from passengers to any electronics, laptops, water bottles, Tim Hortons cups, whatever you have in your vehicle that is not there from factory is included in your cargo capacity. Now, an average adult in Canada is about 195 pounds. However, let's round it up to 200 pounds. So for ourselves, it's myself, my wife and my daughter. Um, so combined, we are look likely looking at about 430 pounds of just passengers. We also have a pretty large dog. Um, so so, which add another 75 pounds easily. Uh, we bring our kayaks, we have some tools in the back, so a miscellaneous amount of, let's say, another 200 pounds in the truck uh, and the bed. So when we now look at our numbers, we can see that the results are all green. So we are well within our towing capacity. So our towing capacity, again, is the difference between um, the 
the trailer, fully loaded weights, so in this case again, our GVWR, and the total uh, towing capacity on the truck. Uh, smaller trailer with a with a half ton truck again i don't think it's a surprise to anybody from a payload we have lots excess we have 741 pounds remaining out of the 1821 pounds here and our gcwr so our, our total combined rating between the truck the trailer all the cargo fully loaded everything we have excess as well so as you can see the truck is almost overkill for the trailer, but as a result, it's definitely safe, it's legal, and it honestly tows like a dream. So now that we crunch some numbers, we know that we are within all limits when it comes to the tow vehicle and trailer. If you're getting any value out of this video, please hit the like button or subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to push this type of video to more people that may be interested in knowing or learning the same. And before we move on, let's look at another tow vehicle as an example let's look at our original tow vehicle the tow vehicle that we used to tow this trailer with originally let's go back outside check out some numbers use the same trailer the same numbers however let's use a different tow vehicle so in this case what we will be using is this vehicle right here which is a 2016 jeep cherokee 3.2 liter when properly equipped it can tow 4500 pounds so knowing that the gvwr of the trailer is 3750 pounds we should be perfectly fine right we have 750 pounds excess of, uh, of towing capacity not really because again let's check some numbers so similar as on the truck all the important numbers are right on the door either the door jam or the door of your driver's side so the first sticker we need to look for is our gvwr in this case, we can see that our GWR, so in other words, the fully loaded capacity, empty weight plus cargo passengers is 5,500 pounds for this vehicle. On the actual door jam of the vehicle is now our second most important number, which is our payload capacity. You can see for this Jeep, it's 985 pounds. So now that we know what the GVWR and the payload numbers are on the Jeep, the other thing that of course we need to check is for a brake controller. Now please note that most SUVs, certainly mid size to smaller size SUV, will not come with a brake controller, which means you will have to purchase one aftermarket. However, before you do so, make sure you have the correct wiring harness. If you don't have the appropriate wiring harness, there's no point even installing it because it's not gonna do anything. If you're not entirely sure whether your vehicle has the required wiring harness or not, you can always check the manufacturer's website, check your window sticker if you have it. If there is anything related to a tow package, you're typically okay. However, make sure that the tow package you have supports the seven pin connection. It did not come from factory. I had to add it after the fact. You can buy it anywhere, including Amazon. However, again, it is key to make sure you have the correct wiring harness installed. So the last item we need to check for is the hitch and make sure we have the proper connections. So on the back of the vehicle, you can see we have our hitch receiver. We have our seven pin as well as the four pin. For a trailer, you always need the seven pin unless it's a smaller trailer. Now let's go back inside and use the same trailer that we've used on the truck, but now on the Jeep and see if we're still safely and legally towing this with this tow vehicle. As a result of editing magic, we are back into the computer. So the first thing we want to look for is the vehicle specifications. In this case, since I'm in Canada, I'm looking up the Canadian specifications. So this is the vehicle itself. So if we scroll down to the first metric we want to look at, it is the tow capacity. So as you can see here, the 3.2 liter when properly equipped with the trailer tow package, which the Jeep has, we're looking at a tow capacity of 4,500 pounds. The other important item to note is your curb weight and the rest of the numbers we already have, including the GVWR. So now let's put the numbers into the spreadsheet. So the tow vehicle, of course, is the 2016 Jeep Cherokee. The curb weight, which we know from the guide, is 4108. The GCWR, I calculated, I took the GVWR, so the totally loaded vehicle, at 5,500 pounds, plus the towing capacity of 4,500 pounds, equals the GC. WR of 10,000. We know that the towing capacity in this case is 4,500 and we know that the payload in this case is 985. So the big issue is as you see we are well within towing capacity. Again we have 750 pounds to spare. Our G 
WCR, we also have about a thousand pounds to spare. However, if you look at the payload, we are down negative 95 pounds. The reason really being between the passenger pets and miscellaneous, we are just over capacity. Uh, even though the miscellaneous may be a little bit lighter, um, we still have tools, we still have stuff in the Jeep, so we are still over payload capacity. This is the absolute main reason why we upgraded to the truck. We wanted to carry kayaks, we wanted to carry additional supplies and we simply could not carry it also with our daughter growing bigger weighing more we were definitely hitting our payload capacity and with all the numbers mean you may question okay why do i care i just want to go camping i just want to get my trailer there i want to enjoy camping and although most tow vehicles can perfectly do that even if you're above your limits the drawback is really again from a legal and safety perspective so of course the first reason why you want to stay within your capacity is your brakes your brakes are built for a certain weight if you're going over that capacity your brakes may not be sufficient anymore which can cause a scenario where you have to hit the brakes and your brakes cannot handle the load as a result you now may be part of an accident that otherwise you would have not been a part of reason number two less likely but it certainly does happen is you may get pulled over they may put you on the scale and they will really look at your gross vehicle weight rating of the truck and the trailer so again your maximum totally low the capacity if any of them is over the capacity you may be looking at a significant fine the last and perhaps more severe situation is you may end up in an accident and because you have an overloaded trailer or tow vehicle your insurer may investigate and determine that hey you're over capacity therefore we're not going to cover you now this could be very 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 costly so at the end of the day take five minutes take 10 minutes Check out your numbers, make sure that you are within the legal limits. If you're not specifically from a payload perspective, can you bring less, can you put less items in the vehicle to make sure that you're within legal limits. Now that we know that we can safely tow our trailer, why don't we determine where we wanna go camping? So here's a video, specifically if you're from Ontario, to check out our sixth best provincial park to go camping next.